and welcome to another video. So this week's video is going to be me daily driving my MX-5 NC. So as many of you know, this isn't my daily driver and I thought it'd be a really good experiment to uh, see what it's like to drive this to and from work each day. So I'm working four days this week and I'm basically going to see what it's like to live with through the rain, the sleet, the snow, whatever we get this week. And I'm going to do a summary and I'm going to choose something to uh, focus on each day about what I like or dislike about this car as a daily driver. So let's get on with it and I will see you tomorrow morning on my way to work and then I'll do a summary at the end of the week. There's no lights. Um, yeah, that's better. Hello. Monday. First morning driving the car into work. Obviously it's dark and this will literally be the first time that I've ever driven this car into work. I'm quite excited actually. Just found a bit more light with my phone screen. So today I'm going to focus on comfort, which to me is the most important thing on a daily driver. Let's start her up. Ooh, I think it's quite cold. I'll catch up with you in a bit because the more I talk to the camera, the later I'm getting. So speak to you in a bit. So in terms of comfort, the car is nowhere near as bad as you think it would be. Um, it, it rides a little bit harsher than uh, the Golf does, but for a daily driver, I think it's perfectly tolerable actually, especially in this uh, sport model with the leather seats. The seats are heated, but it's not cold enough to need them on this morning as well as I've got my big jacket on. I will do a summary at lunchtime explaining the cup holder conundrum that I've got going on here. It is damp. Well, it's, it's wet. It's raining. I'm not as chilled out as if I were to be daily driving the Golf because, um, yeah, this is rear-wheel drive with not very good tyres on and uh, it's just not quite as relaxing driving it in the wet. So, although the comfort aspect is fine, the mental comfort aspect, if that makes any sense, is less fine, especially in the wet. Because at every corner, I'm like, oh, yeah, this car's rear-wheel drive. I know I shouldn't be because it's drive it sensibly there's not really any chance of you spinning but it just does cross your mind that you are driving a rear-wheel drive sports car in the wet oh it's raining pretty bad now okay so the second thing that i'd like to address the soft top so in the mornings pretty much you just want to be warm and sort of slowly wake up and this soft top makes you feel like you're in a tent I think it's to do with exposure. You feel very exposed. You're still comfortable and warm, but you don't have like a solid piece of metal protecting you from that warmth. You have a thin piece of fabric. So way I could describe it is if you've ever been camping, when you're in a tent and it's raining outside, you're warm and comfortable inside the tent, but you know that all that's protecting you is a thin piece of fabric. It's pretty much the same in here. In a normal car with a hard top roof or a hard top MX-5 for example, you feel like you're very protected from the elements. But in this, you're protected from the elements, but you know that um, it's just a piece of fabric that's protecting you. So you don't quite feel as secure from the elements as if um, as if you had a metal hard top. That's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? points that I noticed this morning but I didn't really touch on is the heating. So this car being a two litre petrol heats up so quickly and um, I didn't really realise it because you don't really notice things like that until you've been in like a, a diesel that doesn't heat up very quickly but this car was pretty much blowing out hot air on my feet within a couple of minutes so that's a massive pro for this car especially like because people worry about convertibles in winter. Thumbs up for that. What I was trying to talk about this morning was my Thermo Cafe mug right so this is the driver's side cup holder and this is sort of the leg space that I have and in order to fit that in there it sort of sits like that and I have to push that handle there so then your leg space is like I don't know how big is that yeah so that's how much room I've got for my leg there and the seat is all the way back and um all the way down and back and as far as back and down as I can go. On the other side, it's actually worse because you've got the handbrake and when the handbrake's off, oh, we're rolling a little bit. <laughs> when the handbrake's off, that's the, that's the leg room that I've got on this side. So yeah, I don't know how much space that is. Let's try and demonstrate with a standard size item. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate that with my old iPhone, which is an iPhone 6. And yeah, that space there. Yeah, you can fit an iPhone in it, but you can't fit it lengthways. So just to give you an idea of how much space you've got, that's, that's about that wide between the uh, handbrake and the steering wheel on this side. and then then on this side, yeah, this side is actually a lot better. <laughs> so you've got a lot more wiggle room there and um, still can't fit the phone in lengthways. That just gives you an idea of the uh, space either side. Um, but yeah, noticed it this morning because of this on this side. A bit tighter than I would like really, but hey ho, still doable. And I know some of you will say, well, why don't you put it in the middle cup holder? 
If I were to put that in the middle cup holder like that, A, it's gonna move about, and B, I need to change gear. Although, well look, that does fit perfectly, so maybe that would, that would hold it in place there. The other thing I could do is put it on the other side of the car. Like that, and then that would solve all my problems here. Oh well, I'll uh, probably do that tomorrow. Look at those socks, Whoa, snazzy. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning is the pedal box size. So I have size 10 feet, and these are my lovely work shoes, as you can see. And um, not that much space down here. Again, it's still achievable to uh, obviously drive this car. It's not. I'm not moaning that there's not enough space to drive it. It's just not that comfortable. There is a bit of room. I've had to take out the uh, floor mat because it was sliding around too much and it was annoying me and it gives me that little bit of extra space underneath my feet but yeah that's sort of how much room you have on the pedal box here so no left foot braking really because you just step on your own feet i wouldn't want to be bigger than a size 10 let's put it that way So today is powertrain day. It's not my favorite of all aspects of this car. I'm not totally in love with the two liter engine. It's all right, it's all right, but it's not like my favorite part of the car. So a few things that I wanted to cover off is how this car feels in traffic in a morning commute. I'm gonna to touch on a bit of fuel economy. As you know, I did a fuel economy test in my recent video. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'll link up, up there. And then some points that I do miss on a daily drive about this car, not strictly related to uh, engine and gearbox, but same sort of area. So the first thing I've got to mention which obviously makes a huge difference to your uh, everyday commute is the clutch pedal and as you can see today I'm wearing some rather nice natty socks. So this car, well on my car particularly, the clutch pedal isn't crazy firm or anything. Yes it's firmer than my goal but it's not like hard to push or anything so I wouldn't say you're going to get a tired leg from pressing the clutch pedal. The only thing that I do know on this car is that the uh, biting point is really high so the first time that I drove it I, I stalled it which wasn't cool and I looked a bit of a muppet in front of the salesman but yeah it's much higher than normal so my Golf is probably about 30% of the way from the floor and I'd say this car is between 70 and 80% away from the floor. If I show you the pedal here, Golf is probably about down there and then this car is probably about there. So just before it releases, that's when the clutch engages, which is hard to get used to at first, but once you start driving it, it's absolutely fine. Another point that I think is worth to mention on a daily drive is the throw of the gearbox. All the MX-5 drivers that are watching this, you'll know that the gearbox has a really short throw. Mine is pretty stiff and that's because I've not changed the transmission fluid since I've owned it. I'm not sure what the interval is. I think it's like 50 or 70,000 miles. So it's probably due a change. Anyway, the short throw gearbox, I really like it actually. It's not hard to drive as a daily driver. I will say that it's quite difficult to get it into second. If the car isn't warm and the transmission fluid isn't warm, you might as well just skip second and go straight to third because it takes about five minutes to warm up and then you can engage second gear. I really don't think anyone would have any problems driving this gearbox and uh, clutch combination on a day-to-day -day basis. Now I said I would touch on fuel economy. So I put 30 pounds at the start of the week in this car from empty that was. Yeah, I've done about 50, 40, 90, 130, about 130. So it's done 130 miles on 30 pounds from empty. And um, that's how much fuel I've got left. Filled it up to 30, was just above the halfway mark here. And yeah, what's that? So realistically, for me driving this car on my commute, which fair play does have a lot of roundabouts and stuff in it, it's probably gonna be costing about 40 pounds for five days of driving. And that'll average out about 250 miles at a guess. So 40 pounds every 250 miles, I think is a reasonable expectation for me from this car on a daily drive commuting to and from work. But with this car, you do have to remember that it's not a torquey car. Even though this is the biggest engine, it doesn't have loads of torque in the lower rev. So this car car honestly doesn't really start moving until about three, three and a half thousand RPM. Wow, what is going on with my hair? And for me, that's why I love this car, because on a weekend, you can take it out and you can rev it out, and it's really good fun to drive. But on a day-to-day -day driving basis, you do get a bit tired of having to rev it out all the time because it's burning your fuel, and yeah, it's fun, but sometimes you just want to chill out in the morning. You have to rev it out more to go anywhere. And on a daily commute, not necessarily what you always want. Still, pretty good fun. So today is practicality. Well, it's not really practicality, it's more space. Does this car have enough space to, uh, I don't know if you can see me or not, it's why my head's like this. It's a convertible, so technically there's enough space for 
everything because it's an infinite amount of space as long as you can fit the bottom of what you're carrying on the passenger seat. Obviously I can't show you that whilst I'm uh, poodling around behind this hire van. As a work car, um, I hope that you haven't got that many colleagues because obviously this car can only carry one other colleague. Um, if that's not a problem for you, then that's all right. Or if your work has uh, pool cars or has company cars, then that's fine. But yeah, this one, you've got to bear in mind, you're only ever going to get one other person in it. So some of this interior stuff I've uh, whizzed over in some other videos. In terms of space for a daily driver, I think it's perfectly adequate. You know, you've got quite a big glove box. Obviously, like, got my uh, necessary MX-5 cap in there, GoPro, sunglasses, a book. There's all good stuff in there. And then you also have this middle cubby, which I've never ever used really for anything. But you always have it if you need extra space. I think these are coin holders. No idea. Never use them. And then you've got this really sort of annoying little centre section here, which is for your receipts and your pens and some old coins. But yeah, in terms of interior space, inside the interior compartment, it's perfectly adequate. And obviously you've got the boot space as well. I can't see what you really need to get in there that would be too big, unless you're going to Ikea or B&Q and getting some huge sheets of uh, two before or something like that. But again, you could probably put the roof down and stick them out the top. So not necessarily as impractical as people think it is. But at the moment in the boot, I've got about two litres of oil, oil funnel, bag of gubbins and roll for the car for its oil leak that it used to have as well as a pair of shoes the mat for uh, underneath my feet a work bag and a coat so there's plenty of room in there for your uh, everyday bits and bobs obviously this car isn't really fit if you're like a handyman or a plumber or electrician i have had my toolbox in there but it is a right pain to get in and out through the small boot opening so i wouldn't recommend it if you're uh, a workman and you have to carry your tools everywhere but a van is probably much better for that Good morning lovely people, it is Thursday, so it is the last day this week that I'm commuting to work and therefore it is the last day that I'm commuting in the Mazda. And today I just want to focus on some of the little niggles that I like, some of the little niggles that I don't like. Oh, traffic, traffic, lots of traffic. Okay, so the first point that I want to address is the windscreen wipers. First thing is, they're not that good, so I will demonstrate that now. Come on windscreen wipers. They're very smeary. It's probably not really the car's fault. It's probably because they've, they've never been changed. But yeah, they're just not quite as good as a more modern car. No offense, Mazda, it's probably not your fault. On the NDs and the newer cars, it's probably perfect. But on this car, not that good. Second thing is that water jet that you saw perform just then worked really well. I'll do it again. Where is it? You can see it's running really, really well, <laughs> which um, isn't normally the case. It's actually more like a dribble that comes out. I'll try and demonstrate that whilst I'm driving. It's only when I'm driving anywhere, it's almost as if there's a, like a faulty connection or there's just not quite enough power to go into the uh, pump to squirt it out whilst you're driving along. Very strange. I need to have a look into it actually because there's times where you're driving along, you you squirt the windscreen wipers and they don't even they don't even squirt any water even though there's loads of water in there it actually happened to me in last week's video where i went to north wales so yeah not the best windscreen wipers and when it's hammering it down like it was uh, monday tuesday of this week they were actually really poor in in the really really heavy rain um again i could probably change the rubbers and massively improve them but worth bearing in mind that if you live in some rainforest tropical climate where you have huge thunderstorms and rain in them well thunderstorms have rain in them mx5 probably not the best car for you but you probably knew that already also on the wipers the stalk to make them go is the opposite to any German car so on is down and off is up and then single wipe is up and then up all the way and I'm pretty sure that is opposite to any German car and it always catches me out because you want them to go faster when it's raining and you press it way that you think is faster which in a German car is up and you actually turn them off. One of the other niggles is Bluetooth or lack of Bluetooth. Bluetooth seems to be having a resurgence and I absolutely love it. It allows me to make phone calls whilst I'm driving which you can can't do in this car so you don't realize what you're missing until you don't have it again i know some of them came with bluetooth you can swap out this headset which gives you bluetooth this stock car 2007 two liter sport does not have bluetooth and i wish it did oh look that's me hello one of the most annoying things which i didn't realize until yesterday driving home in the dark this rear view mirror is great there's nothing wrong with it it shows you a really good view out the back but um it's also in a low car and it's mounted low down to the road compared to everyone else so if you're in front of pre 
pretty much any car that's slightly raised, such as a van or an SUV or a lorry, you do tend to get dazzled. When they're behind you, the headlights are obviously higher off the ground than most car headlights. And because they're higher off the ground and you're in a low car, that means that they're right in your field of vision. So actually what I found last night is that it was actually really distracting having headlights right in your eyes all the time. And again, you don't really notice it until you're in a car that's low down. People with supercars must have it 10 times worse because they're even lower than this is. And it just means that your rear view mirror reflects the full on headlight from the car behind you. Bit annoying nearly have to put my sunglasses on at night. Oh yeah. Also, I think it's worth mentioning the seat belts in Mazdas, especially uh, older Mazdas, are notorious for going sticky. And I've had quite a few comments on videos about, you know, if you pull them out loads, they don't tend to retract, look, like that. And then they tend to just sit on the seat all floppy. And it's really annoying because they can get caught in the doors. Mine aren't too bad in comparison to pretty much every other one that I've seen, but it does become a bit annoying. The driver's side is slowly getting worse, so um, I need to have a look at how I can fix it without just totally replacing the seatbelt retentioner. Or maybe, maybe I could get a harness. That means new roll bar, new seat. <sighs> But yeah, the seatbelts can probably be fixed and it's probably a really inexpensive fix, but I need to look into it. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I only did four days in the car, but four is probably enough for me. The one thing I didn't touch on is how much fun this car is to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like I'm punishing the car when I'm driving it through horrendous rain, because I don't think it's designed really to run in the rain. But yeah, if this is your only car, it's totally achievable to drive it on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, I would daily drive it to and from work in summer every day, but maybe not in winter. Another point on that is that because I only drive this car on weekends, it, it sort of adds a little bit of a special feel to it. Whereas if I drive it every day, it sort of starts to lose that feeling of being special, uh, which is a privilege of having two cars and not daily driving your sports car, I get that. But if you can daily drive it, totally fine. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe and I hope to see you very, very soon. Cheers.